You know, our biggest issue and the reason why the people are here today and we formed OEPA is the destruction of hundreds of vertical wells from horizontal frack jobs across our state. While we know how difficult it is to address issues legislatively when the industry is divided, what advice could you give us as an industry, as an association, in helping trying to solve these problems going forward? Start with Senator Simpson. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to give you my Walmart analogy and hope it makes sense, but I've thought about this. You know, Walmart uh, came into uh, southern Oklahoma and uh, set up a super center, and probably within six to eight months, almost every mom and pop grocery store was out of business within six to six months to a year. In fact, uh, I was able to buy some nice property at a reduced price from a gentleman that had an IGA store in Ardmore, and he said within six months after the Walmart Supercenter opened that he was out of business. That's, that's a story where we see the big guy coming in and, 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 and their business model putting the little guys out of business. I don't disagree with that because that's the free market at work, and, and I think we all in, in this room uh, support the free market. Now, what I would have objected to is if Walmart came in and, and they went to private businesses and they just went in the door and started stocking the shelves with their own product and just moved the, the little guy out because they were so big they could just come in and muscle the mom and pop businesses out of, out of the way and take over their facilities and set up their product and their employees and, and start doing business. I would object to that. And that's kind of what we see happening with, with you all is you've got the big guy coming in and you both are entitled to do business. Uh, you're both entitled, you both have a property right, just like a store owner would have had a property right to their store, but we wouldn't allow Walmart to come in and just move all their product out and start stocking the shelves with Walmart product. But in your situation, we've got the big guy coming in, which is the Walmart of the, of the oil industry, and you're the mom and pop businesses, and in some cases they're coming in and they are just coming into your property and they are taking your product, they are taking your resources, they are flooding your uh, wells with fracking water, uh, they are damaging your wells and taking all the production from your wells and sucking it into their zones that they are, uh, they're exploiting. Uh, and that's not fair, just like we wouldn't want Walmart to do that to the small mom and pops. We can't let the big oil companies do that to you just because they're big enough to do it and they've got enough influence, they've got enough power to do it, we can't allow them to do that because just like that mom and pop store has a property right, you have a property right to the, to the site where you're actually drilling your vertical well. And you're entitled to that property right to capture that resource and capture that product and benefit financially from that and your company benefit financially from that. So we can't allow that to happen, but we can't allow new technologies to come in and destroy your business and your resource just because they have, they, they can do it. We can't let them do that. To me, uh, it's a question of, do we want a short-term view of the oil and gas industry or do we want a long-term view of the oil and gas industry? And I think that's the fight that we need to have at this point. And I think that this is, is somewhat of a moment to have that conversation. What does the oil industry look like? What happens, I, I had dinner with a few of you guys a, a week or two ago, uh, and, and the question was asked, what, what happens to a fracked well when it isn't putting out a massive amount of oil every day? Are, these, are, are those big companies that have come in and, and done that well, are they actually going to tend it when it slows down? Or is this going to go back to you guys who have been here for the last hundred years and will be here for the next hundred years to do that, to look out for our resources, to move our state forward? I think the answer is that the long-term view, the long-term success of our state is in this room and is in the people who have been here before and will be here in the end. And I think we need to have that conversation. We need to have it in the state capitol. They need to have that at the Corporation Commission. The governor needs to be having that conversation. And clearly that conversation is going to be held in the courts also. Uh, so I don't think there's any one place that this problem gets solved. But I do think that this is a conversation we have to have about what's best not for the next five years but what's best for the next hundred years uh, because in the next hundred years uh, the fact that they're bashing your wells the fact that you're taking they're taking the the 10 10 barrel well 
that's been running for a hundred years. Uh, the fact that they're taking that away is bad for the long-term outlook for the state of Oklahoma. That's a conversation we need to have, and we need to have it in every room that we're talking about the future of Oklahoma. And so it's legislation, yes, but it's the Corporation Commission. It is, I mean, the governor, if he wants to take a long-term view, we need to talk about what we're doing. Uh, because what we're doing right now is not best for the next 50 years for the state of Oklahoma.